So I need to give a huge shout out to Creedman03 or 03, one of the two. I'm gonna have a link to his channel down in the description. He wants to be a big full-time YouTuber and I got him to make a really funny face on his live stream from the other night. He just happened to pop up in my recommended section. So yeah, I'm very tired because my full-time work schedule has been changed three times. Let's go ahead and get into, well, these are Yu-Gi-Oh! investments that you should be getting on into, potentially. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Oh, Billy. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the very tired most, Avery LR32, here and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain over that subscribe button. Swing climb even higher, the 1100 ladder. Hope you all are having a fantastic day. Let's dive on into these investments. So... We are pretty much hitting a point in Yu-Gi-Oh! as I look at the Yu-Gi-Oh! page here. We're pretty much month to month. We're going to be getting some sort of new Yu-Gi-Oh! product, at least when it comes to like booster packs and things. I know that apparently we're getting a Jack Atlas structure deck at some point. That's going to be hot fucking garbage. I can already tell you that right now. But I want to talk about uh, potential investments and what you should potentially invest into and what you shouldn't when it goes when it comes to the new sets that are coming out. So first of all, I want to get out of the way the Legend of Blue Eyes Invasion of Chaos, the reprints of these retro sets that come out uh, seven fourteen, whatever month that is. Um, here's the issue. Yes, you're going to be getting quarter century secret rares. Yes, it's for the twenty fifth anniversary. I would say that unless you plan on buying a case and sitting on it for a few years to resell and make, you know, a lot of money, I do not feel that these are going to be worth investing in because there's just nothing there. You're going to be getting quarter century secret rares of cards and that's fucking it. Like, okay, you're reprinting LOB. Cool. I'm going to buy a case of it. I'm going to put it away in my closet and I'm going to let it sit there for five, six, seven years and then turn around and sell it for $3,000. Like... That is going to be the main draw of these retro sets. Um, same goes for the anniversary collection, which leads me into my next point. Uh, the anniversary collection that will have these retro packs before they're actually fully out on the market. You know, yes, they are going to be reprinting like anime cards and things in the Egyptian gods. But outside of like big name reprints that may be in that anniversary uh, legendary collection set, I feel like that that's again just going to be something that if you buy which you shouldn't even buy if you don't really, you know, want to use up your money on it, buy it and then invest in it and just, you know, let, let the sealed product gain value, you know, like the old anniversary collections are hundreds of dollars now because they're just years upon years old. I don't really feel like outside of that, the uh, legendary collection along with the reprints of the old packs is really going to be worth a whole lot. So I'm getting into, uh, the next big core booster set that we have on May 5th, Cyberstorm Access. Now, I've been sort of going back and forth on should this be a set that we invest in. And honestly, outside of time rendering Morganite and maybe the Mana Dome stuff, which I would argue is probably only going to be better once we get Duelist Nexus two months after Cyberstorm, there's not really much else to invest in this set. For those of you who don't know about time rendering Morganite, that I already made a video about a while back and said they put a brand new master rule into a card. Time rendering Morganite, you activate it. It's a normal spell. You can't activate any monster effects in the hand for the rest of the duel after you activate this card. But in exchange, you get three effects, assuming that you don't get ashed. You get to draw two cards for your normal draw in your draw phase, not just one. You get two normal summons or sets a turn, not just one. And then if there's a time rendering Morganite in your grave and in your hand, you banish the copy from the grave, ditch the one from your hand. Anytime you normal summon or set that turn, the opponent cannot activate monster effects in response. So if you normal summon a monster and it has an effect that activates on the normal summon, the opponent can't activate monster effects because it's on the normal summon, Sugar Boo Bear. So it's it's cute. It's mostly going to probably be using stun decks and decks like Flunder and Rogue and possibly Eldritch and things like that because it's two draws in your draw phase. So you can activate a duality or a prosperity or an extra and get even more pluses. Ain't that hot? It's really hot. Outside of that, I don't really know if Cyberstorm's worth investing in. Like everybody is up each other's butt about purely, which I'm still trying to figure out like how best to play purely in the TCG. I think we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens once Cyberstorm Access comes out and we get the new Purely Lily. But like putting Purely Lily and Time Rendering Morganite into a set 
isn't going to make me want to buy a case. You know, I think Cyberstorm is definitely going to be one of those sets where if you want to play Mana Dome, depending on rarities, you can maybe pick up a, a, a core of it for like a hundred bucks online. You pick up your play set of Time Rendering Morganites and maybe three Purely Lily if you want to play Purely and you just wipe your hands of the set and you're done. Um, I don't really feel like that this is going to be a set that you would really go out of your way to, to buy a case of or to even sit on product for a long period of time. Next up, we have on 6-2, Wild Survivors. So this is what has the Vanquished Soul, the Hungry Burger archetype, and the new dinosaur stuff, which the fusions, those, those fusion monsters artwork is mwah, fantastic. The problem with Wild Survivors is that it's a side set. So obviously, since it's a side set, for those of you who don't know, core booster sets don't have short prints, whereas side sets don't hold to that same formula. So like, you know, mathematically, you're going to probably pull a Starlight in one in every three cases of a set or one in every one case, um, whereas Wild Survivors doesn't pertain to that because it's a side set and it may or may not have Starlights. It's similar to like the Battle of the Legends stuff. Sometimes they have Starlights, sometimes they don't. And so I don't know if the new dinosaur stuff is really going to push dinos over the top. Vanquished Soul is hot garbage. The Hungry Burger stuff will maybe be kind of decent, but it just seems like it's a little bit too inconsistent. It just seems like Drytron does it better. Um, but to have the new dino stuff, especially since people love their dinosaurs, I think if you want to play dinos, you should definitely on after release, I should say, pick up a core of the dino stuff and then, you know, have hopefully a decent tier one to tier two deck to play with. Next up here, we have Battles of Legend on 623, Monstrous Revenge. So outside of like some sort of spicy reprints that are in here, I don't really see this being an absolutely amazing set. Like we're getting quarter century secret rares in Arm Neos, Assault Synchron, Dante, Dark Arm, uh, Ride of Aramiser and Double uh, A Zeus are going to be reprints, uh, as well as Lo Welcome Labyrinth, and then of course Sky Striker Engage will have the alternate art. But outside of things like that, that's not really worth buying core or buying sealed product on. You're better off just buying those as singles. And as a reprint set, the Battles of Legend is definitely fantastic. Um, but again to to get sealed product of this especially when it's a side set so you're not guaranteed certain pulls you're better off if you want to pick up some zeus's or you want to pick up cheap ride of air measers to play an adventure package depending on what happens on our next mail list then yes by all means get this stuff as singles and i, I think you're you're going to be able to find good value in it i don't really think it's going to be worth um a whole lot of money i think you're going to be able to get it for a decently cheap affordable price uh, last but not least here on 728 is Duelist Nexus. So we know, I think, roughly like half of what's in the set. We're getting new Battle and Boxer support. We're getting Synchron support out the ass. I mean, the cover card of Duelist Nexus is like a new type of Quasar shit. Um, from what I recall, the oh, we're also getting the new Infernoble Knight uh, support stuff. Uh, the Grinosaurus retrain. Uh, new Evil Source support, stuff like that. Um, I think with the new Synchron support, if I recall correctly, it allows Junk Speeder or it allows the deck in general to play through Ash, which was its biggest issue. I don't know if it can really play through Nibiru, which makes me wonder if it will even be good. It might be tier two at best because if you don't open Nib, then you lose. Um, but I do feel like Duelist Nexus has the potential to be a set that you'll want to buy a case of. And it's not necessarily because like it's one of the greatest sets of all time. It's it's certainly not from what we've seen so far. But with the cards that we have seen and the potential that Dueling Nexus has to be an amazing set, which I believe also in Duelist Nexus we get Vicious Astroud, which just pushes this set to a whole nother level. Um, if we're getting Vicious Astroud and Cyberstorm Access, then uh, in case I am incorrect, you're still better off just buying singles out of Cyberstorm Access because if Vicious Astroud is in there, Vicious Astroud and Time Rendering Morganite are going to be the two main cards that push that set next to Mana Dome. But I believe that we're also getting some extra Mana Dome goodies in Duelist Nexus, so that could potentially help push Duelist Nexus to the next level. And I feel like that's what is going to happen to Mana Dome. You know, they're going to get the cash tier treatment where in Darkwing Blast, 
we saw a little bit of the Kashatira stuff. It could kind of operate as a deck. Then once we got Photon Hypernova, then we were able to get Kashatira at full power. I feel like the same thing is going to happen in Mana Dome where we get the main guts of it in Cyberstorm Access. Then in Duelist Nexus, we get the remainder of it. Vicious Astral, the whole nine. And then the deck can become a huge force. And Vicious Astroud, no matter what set is in, it's in between Duelist Nexus and Cyberstorm, it's going to push that set and it's going to sell sealed product. But Duelist Nexus is looking like a tasty treat. I think that Duelist Nexus may be a good set to buy a case of and just make money off of it. You know, and I mean, for any of this product, you could always buy a case of it. Just you have to know that you're going to be sitting on an investment for the long haul and that it's not going to go up overnight. You know, you're going to have to wait a few years before this stuff becomes valuable. And I think that's something that a lot of people miss is that they want to invest in Yu-Gi-Oh! and make money right on the spot. But it's like, it's called an investment for a reason. You got to wait before you can make money back, Sugar Boo Bear. So guys, let me know what you think about this. I mean, there's not a whole lot of great stuff coming out product wise. I think there's going to be a lot of decent singles that come out of all this. Um, but the, the retro pack stuff is definitely, unless you want to sit on it for years and years, I just don't think that that's worth investing in. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Be sure to go check out Preezman03 and I'll see you in the next video.